Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the Funimation dub of episode 35 of Dragon Ball Super. Now, we start this episode off with Vegeta and Frost about to have their match, because keep in mind, Frost was going to be disqualified for being exposed as a cheater, but Vegeta actually insisted that Frost stay in the tournament and forced Piccolo to forfeit so he could fight Frost for himself. Beerus and Ciampa both agree to, for just the Vegeta versus Frost fight, throw the rule book out the window. The announcer or referee, whichever you want to call him, he's not happy about this, but even Vegeta is okay with throwing the rule book out the window. Now, as for the match itself, Vegeta quickly powers up to Super Saiyan 1, and he easily takes care of Frost. He gets Frost out of the ring, and he even says that he held back enough just so that he could knock Frost unconscious rather than kill him because he didn't want to stoop to Frost's level, as he put it. And so Vegeta won. <laughs> and as that's going on, or after that match is over, Beerus is examining Goku because he thinks that if he can find proof that Frost used the poison on Goku, Goku will be allowed back into the tournament. And true enough, they do find a proof of Frost poisoning Goku. So Goku is allowed to return to the tournament. Now Goku wants to be the last one to fight because he wants to see Manaka fight, but Beerus is all... Oh no, Manaka is our secret weapon. He must fight last. That's the way it has to be, Goku. <laughs> and so Beerus insists that Goku will step, step up to play again if Vegeta gets defeated in any of the upcoming matches. And well, Goku notices that Manaka has apparently not blinked this whole time and... Whis ha passively mentions that he lost consciousness after seeing Goku's Kamehameha, and Beerus quickly tells Whis to be quiet about that and about not to give away Manaka's true identity. <laughs> hmm. And after that, it turns out that Ciampa wanted to come up with a new rule now. So Vados pl places a barrier around the ring so you could think of it as the equivalent of a cage match essentially and this new rule is if you touch the barrier that counts as a ring out as well so it does limit the limits the scope of where the fighters can uh, go in the match and Beerus isn't too happy about that he's like Way to throw a new rule at me at the last minute, Ciampa. I'm just concerned about the spectators, Beerus, that's all. And yeah, they go back and forth about that. And they even try to play rock, paper, scissors uh, over this argument. But while it's happening, Vados notices that Frost regained consciousness and he's actually trying to... He's trying to escape, essentially, and steal... We see a flashback where Ciampa, he uh, gave the universe six fighters an incentive to fight at their best by promising them some treasure if they, if they win. And the, so Frost is going to steal the treasure and use the hexahedron, that cube, to for transportation purposes to escape, but someone stops him, and it's the purple humanoid alien, and we actually get to hear him talk now. He's voiced by Matthew Merker. Frost recognizes him as Hit, and says how he's Universe Six's legendary assassin. At first, Frost fears that maybe he's come after Hit has come after Frost because of Ciampa's orders or 
maybe even being hired by one of the civilians of the planets that Frost uh, started a war on and then ended for profit purposes. But Hit really admits that, nah, he just doesn't want Frost to take something that he was promised that he could have if he won the tournament. <laughs> Simple as that. And also, he's very effective at, at knocking Frost unconscious because it looks like he didn't even go right up to Frost. It looked like he was standing still. But, well, if you've seen the sub version, sub and you're caught up with the subs, then you know what this is. But let's not say for those who are just following along with the dub. Vados also noticed how it's all resolved, so she's not worried. And so with that taken care of and the new rule in place, Vegeta still represents Universe 7's team, but the Universe 6 fighter who will be representing their universe is the giant robot, whose name is revealed to be Otto Magetta. Now, when I... It might have... I tried to get a glimpse at it when the credits was going by, but it looked like they didn't actually credit someone to who for who played Otto Magetta. Some people seem to say, think it just said N.A. Like, that probably was the case. It was too quick for me to notice. I'd have to recheck that, but... So, we don't have a credit for who's playing Otto Magetta in the Funimation dub, but... In any case, he speaks a different language than the common language, or the language of whichever dub or sub you're watching. So he doesn't speak that. He speaks his own language. And Old Kai questions if he's even an actual li living organism, not just a robot. And Fua, the Universe 6 Supreme Kai, explains that Automageddon species is called, they're called the Metal Men. And he says that the Metal Men actually should exist in Universe 7 as well. Uh, with that taken care of, the match begins, and at first, Otto Magetta does seem to be very slow. He's like the slow, strong type. Uh, then, but he also is shown to be very durable. Vegeta does try to land a couple of hits on him, but it doesn't seem to phase him much. And then, Magetta does his own variation of a power-up, and he does move a lot faster now, and... I think he hits harder too, it seems. And so Vegeta decides to fly and keep his distance because it looks like Otto Magetta can't fly. And so keeping his distance, Vegeta tries to shoot a barrage of energy blasts at Magetta, but Magetta shoots out lava to counter and... At first, Beerus thinks, oh, that's a flamethrower. That's cheating, ref. But the referee does a quick uh, look. Uh, he looks up information about the Metal Men's biology, and turns out the lava's actually hit Magetta's saliva, so it's allowed. And, and while that's happening, Vegeta kind of is backed into a corner because... He's trying to keep in mind that the barrier's in place, so he's watching that, but it's hard to do that and watch Magetta at the same time. And and Magetta's lava is causing some smoke to fill up. Vegeta's able to counter that with by powering up to Super Saiyan 1 to kind of push back the smoke screen. But, but we end the episode with Whis commenting to Goku and Beerus that that Magetta's attacks are heating up the barriered arena and Vegeta's starting to sweat and tire out from all the heat in there and that's where we leave off. Now, for what I liked about it, it was pretty satisfying to see Vegeta take care of someone who's this, who's like Frieza because a lot of people will agree it seems Vegeta didn't get to favor much luck whenever he went up against Frieza. Granted, he did manage to use the Super Saiyan Blue transformation against Frieza pretty well in the Golden Frieza saga, but then, well, Frieza blew up Earth and they had to do the time rewind so they could, and Goku had to step in before Frieza did his plan. So 
People like this. I mean, and I thought it was nice too. It was pretty satisfying for Vegeta, but again, I still kind of wish it didn't come at the expense of Piccolo. I wish Piccolo got to be in the tournament a little longer, but yeah, I guess, yeah, that kind of was its pro and con and there. And this is where we finally get to hear Hit talk. And his name is revealed here as his auto Megetta, or they're said out loud. So all the universe six fighters names have been said out loud, all five members. But back to Hit, it was only a few lines, but I liked Matthew Merker as Hit. I did like it. I mean, I still think we need to hear a little more, but I do like what I hear. And I am a fan of Matthew Merker's performances. I first heard him as Tigra on the Thundercats reboot. That was around during 2011 and 2012. So, and I've heard him in some other shows and games afterwards. Now, this is interesting because in the Xenoverse 2 video game, Hit was played in the Funimation voice cast. He was played by someone named Aaron Roberts. I'm not very familiar with his other works, but I did hear a couple of clips of it and... Well, I don't have a too strong of an opinion about it. Because I know most people weren't too fond of it, but in my experience, video game performances are not always at their best, at least. Or to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I remember back when I saw some clips for the... Uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm video games for the Naruto franchise. I knew some people weren't too keen on how some of the characters sounded in the games, but then when the dub for the anime got to those particular scenes, people seemed to warm up to the, those voices a little more. At least that's been my experience. I'm sure other people have different reference pools or different experiences, but that's kind of what I was under the impression or when it came to the Xenoverse video games too. I imagine if Aaron Roberts had returned to play Hit in the anime, I'm sure it would have been an improvement compared to the Xenoverse games because that was the first time he was playing the character and the same for Frost and Kaba's voice artists too. They first played him in the Xenoverse video games. I feel like that was at... I think it's actually better they start with the video game so they can sand out the rough edges, if you will, so that by the time the anime, they get to that part in the anime when they dub it, it'll be more polished and they'll have a better understanding of the character so it'll sound better when they first show up in the anime. So I think Aaron Roberts could have done well. I don't think it was... I guess I feel that the Xenoverse performance wasn't... A fair comparison yet my intent was I'll be patient and wait and see how the performances are in the anime before I make up my mind on what I think of these voices but like I said I do like Matthew Merker and I'm definitely think he did well with what I heard so far but I do still feel need to hear more just before I give a fair comparison I just don't think two lines are Roughly two lines, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't think that's enough to give a fair comparison just yet. But I think it's promising what I did here. Now, otherwise, Otto Magetta was the big part of this episode, and he seems to be a pretty unique fighter. <laughs> like it said, it, I said earlier, it seems like he can't fly, so what that stands out particularly since around Dragon Ball Z, that was sort of when flying kind of became a regular thing in the franchise. So having a fighter who can't fly going against Vegeta, that is pretty interesting. But Megeta definitely seems like even if he can't fly, he's not necessarily at a disadvantage. And now Vegeta, though, that heat is definitely getting to him. So it'll definitely be fun to see how that goes. And I definitely looking forward to hearing more of Chris Sabat as Vegeta. I've always been fond of. I definitely feel he's come a long way with the Saiyan Prince since his beginnings, and it'll be fun to see how he tackles the 
the next episode with Vegeta. So, overall, I did like the episode. I liked what we saw so far, and I'm still interested in seeing more of what the dub has to offer for this uh, tournament. And you can expect to hear the... And, well, that's it for this video. Take care, and until next time... <laughs>